All right, we're starting a tiny bit late because we were uh, speaking to Joe Martone. Now, Jim George is here. We're going to speak to Jim about what he does over at American Cable Services. And I just found out he was up in Atlanta, so he's probably tired himself. Good morning, Jim. How you doing? Good morning. Fine, thank you. There you are. There you are. Uh, All right. So how, how long were you in Atlanta? Um, from Monday until last night, so four days. That's a long wow. time. Wow. What do you, you stay in a luxury hotel, Motel 6, RV? What do you stay in? It was a small <laughs> Holiday Inn Express. That's not bad. Holiday Inn uh, Express is a good product, fine, right? Fine. Yep. All you do is sleep there, let's face it. You know, so you're at a convention all day. You yeah. Back, you go yeah. back to the room, you shower. So what's in? what happens at the convention? What do you learn? It's all the latest software and hardware for cable TV. Oh, really? Yeah. So I, what? IPTVs and qualms and I had that problem once. Did, 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 <laughs> did you did you did you um, learn anything that you were surprised at? Was I was, there, I was. Like what? Well, some of the software that's out now um, will let me interrogate my system from anywhere in the world, and I will know there's a problem before the customer even sees a problem on his TV set. Now, what kind of problem? Well, like... Um, My TV doesn't have many problems. No, what happens is uh, cable deteriorates over time. Connectors loosen up over time. Okay, okay. So, Well, that does happen. And so, although the picture may look a little less perfect, some customers get used to it over a while, and so there's no real issue. But the software will tell me I have a loose connector 250 feet down on line six. Oh, for for technicians, not yeah. for the home consumer. No, for me. Oh, wow. I got gotcha. you. Oh, that's really good to know. Yeah, so I can go fix something before you even know you have a problem. Wow, I wonder how it knows that. How does it know where there's a problem in the wire? When uh, when you have a modem in your house, if for, of course, it's an internet customer is what helps us determine this. That modem not only allows internet to go into your house, but it talks back to us. So what we do is we didn't realize when we first invented all this stuff that the modem had hundreds of capabilities and we were using it for one. So people started writing software to interrogate it and come to find out we can know what the signal to noise ratio is and how much noise is there compared to Oh, wow. And we can know, and so now we can, we made a software that um, overlays on your map. So every every cable company has a map of their area. So So you overlay this software and then when it has a problem, it will talk like a TDR, time domain reflectometer. It sends a signal down and sends a signal back and says, hey, there's a problem 300 feet down on the, on this cable. And so you go fix the problem. Wow. Now, now I had a, a situation where my cable was cut by my neighbor who was putting in a garden. Okay? Yes. The, uh, the, of course, when I made my call, they, they did whatever. They can check from the other side. Thank you, Patsy. But they didn't. They didn't know that it was cut. Would would they, with this new technology, be able to actually say, "Oh, looks like you've got a cut or broken cable somewhere." Exactly, and exactly the footage. Wow! At the show, they actually had a. Uh, this was Comcast demonstrating it because they wrote some of the software for their own technicians, and they actually called Colorado and told the technician they see a. Uh, deformity in the cable 912 feet down on node number seven oh, wow. off of port three and the technician went out there and while we, while he was doing the demonstration um, a photograph came back from the technician where he actually found someone was digging and oh and, wow and nicked it oh wow to show us exactly that's cool now does that apply to uh, fiber optics also or is that a different animal well fiber optics is just a way to get it to a point after it gets to the point, then the modem talks back. So, yes, it applies to fiber optics oh, also. Okay, okay. Just a medium, yeah. It was really cool. I mean, all kind of stuff I found. And uh, even the low-voltage stuff we have in here, all new ca- cables and connectors and really neat. And that's really helpful because then you know what type of equipment to bring because that way when you know how, how far down you have to dig something, yep. you know exactly what type of digger and something like that that you yeah. need to we, bring. We know if it's a major problem or just something light that we can get to tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Really? So w- when you're at the Holiday Inn Express, are you watching cable TV while you're in your room? Uh, yes. Actually, they had uh, direct TV, <laughs> which, is, uh, which was a little slow you know, uh, in changing the channel. That's just the technology that direct tv has invented that it's called l-band overlay and what it means is that the dish you have on your house comes out in the l-band mode l-band being a certain group of frequencies okay, that's okay. all l-band mean there's an s-band an e-band a c-band so and then it goes to your satellite receiver so what they do at, at hotels now is they put an antenna up to receive the signal 
And then instead of processing it, they just let the L-band go through to all the rooms and you have a satellite receiver in your room. Well, because of the delay, wow. because of the delay mm -hmm. when you change the channel, it sends a message back up to the antenna and says, yes, this room's authorized for that signal and sends it back. So from the time you change channels to the time it actually changes could be as much as three or four seconds, and that's a real bummer. Oh, wow. El band. So, so in, in Spanish, is that El El Bando? Could be. <laughs> El El Bando. <laughs> 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 So do you do you present anything at the at the conference or are you just I, the spectator? I did not this year. In the past I've I've spoken, yes. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah. you you could actually uh, maybe recruit some new subscribers up in Atlanta. Well, I can recruit subscribers anywhere in the world once we launch our cable. Um, we uh, that th this program this show was not for programs. It wasn't like National Geographic or USA. It was right. more it was all equipment. But it did allow us to talk to other cable companies who were having struggles with their own delivery method, and we can solve that for them with our new invention. Mm -hmm. So they were very happy to talk to us, mm -hmm. very happy. So what kind of equipment do they present up there that might be a uh, little bit better than what is out there today? The, um, the old way of doing business is actually the same new way of doing business uh, because there's so much coax in the ground. Uh, they're just making the coax work for them. Oh, so okay. So in, in order to make it work for them, they're taking the electronics that used to be in the head end, which could be 20 miles away, and they're moving it closer to your community, so they call that the edge. Uh -huh. So they have edge qualms, and they have, so they're, they're moving all this stuff closer to your home, so your experience will be better and quicker, like changing channels and such, because the signal does not have to race back to the head end and get authorization everything handles in your community so all those kind of parts that do that were on display and can you do it all with a device that's as large as your cell phone uh right this with minute all the communication it's that that's the cutting edge wow only a few people have it right now uh -huh. eventually everyone will have it you know the larry <laughs> you and i talked about this last week but uh um everything was wireless you put an antenna up, you watch Channel 2, and you watch Channel 6, uh -huh. and then lo and behold, the, the, the marvelous um, cable TV came in there. They ran wires right. everywhere, and you, were, <laughs> and, and you could get signals anywhere. It's all going back to wireless again. Gosh. Well, that's good. It's all going back to that wireless. That makes more sense. You put an mm -hmm. antenna on your house, and you can watch two or 300 channels from anywhere in the world. Everything's yeah. going wireless. You know, when I, when I go on my computer, it'll tell me where I've been recently. Will, will, will TVs, or do they already do that? I mean, can you turn your TV on and say, what? oh, man, what, was that, what channel was that show on? And you can actually go back and see where it was? Well, yeah, I mean, you have the DVRs where you can record, like a TiVo records. But, I mean, if you didn't actually record the show. Like, I don't record the websites I go to, but it'll say, you know, if, if you want to look at the history, here's where you went. Oh, yes. Well, if you have a, if you have a set-top box uh, uh, today, you cannot do that. But the new set-top boxes will do that. It, it's a small computer. So it will. you could go back and look at the, the channels. Right. Last night at 8 o'clock before you fell asleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes, you know, I, I, don't, I really don't watch TV very much. But I can, I can imagine that if I'm just flipping through, if, you know, if I ever get TV again, I'll find a show and watch it and say, oh, Robin, I watched this great show. What channel was this? Oh, gosh, I don't know. Let me, yeah. go, let me go look at the, uh, the, the memory or something, and it'll, uh, yeah, yeah. it'll, it'll tell me. Is, is there a place for, oh, I'm sorry. Is uh, there a place for uh, backup batteries on there? Because sometimes when the power goes out, then your whole television system will go down. But will there be a backup battery on your system at, at each house so that that won't happen? No, you, the homeowner himself will have to supply his own UPS, his uninterruptible power supply. Oh, okay. But um, they're very inexpensive. Matter of fact, I bought one for our house the other day from Walmart for like $38. And you plug six things into it. And if it draws very little current, like it could be the TV set and it could be the set top, it probably lasts you 30 minutes to an hour in a power outage. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's, That's pretty good. Cool. And you do have a phone call, Jim. Good morning. Thank you for being patient with us. You're on the air with Jim George. Uh, good morning, Mr. George. <clears throat> I'm listening to all this fabulous technology and uh, how, how everything will be wireless, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just curious as to... Uh, are other countries uh, up to snuff with this stuff, or, or, or are we way out there in advance, uh, you know, in advance of everybody else? 
And I'm just curious about that. If you tell me a little about that. Okay, well, the, the last day of the show, which was Thursday morning, um, I attended the International Breakfast. And at that, uh, people from uh, Central and South America were speaking, and people from uh, Austria and Japan and all over. And actually, in some countries, they're a little ahead of us. Like, Japan already has 4K. Uh, their, their main, instead of going to MPEG-2 or MPEG-4, which is the latest and greatest, and we call that high def, uh, they've gone beyond high def to 4K. And it was four times the definition of high def. And they were saying that in 2014, they will be 8K. And they're already experiencing or experimenting with 20K. Um, and yet you take the Central and South America and they may just now be um, getting high def launched. So everybody kind of takes a wait and see to find out it, what kind of pitfalls there are when you launch this new stuff. In other words, they don't want to be on the bleeding edge. They don't mm -hmm. mind being the cutting edge, but, you know, they don't want to put their neck out there. So, but, no, the, world's up, the world in general is lit up with the Internet and everything else. Oh, yeah, I understand that. But, I mean, to the extent of the technology that you're talking about, I mean, this uh, technology that you just described about locating a problem on a cable, I can see tremendous applications for that as far as uh, major utilities are concerned. Cause that's what I dealt with. And uh, sometimes we used to use a uh, an oscilloscope if there was a main, just a main tie feeder or something like that that didn't have spurs off on it to locate a fault and we give us the distance. But now that you have, you're describing this stuff, sounds like something from a uh, science fiction movie. Oh, it is. It's but, wonderful. Uh, it yeah. Exactly. I think it's fantastic. It's like in your day, you had dirty power. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Dirty. All righty. Thank you. Have a good day. So have a good weekend. Thank you, uh, Sonny. Dirty power is uh, still prevalent today. Uh -huh. uh, we find it's a problem when in, uh, in, in Ocala Palms, for instance, when we're trying to deliver high-speed Internet. Uh -huh. People will say, why is it I have to always reset my modem? or reset this or reset that. And I'll say, well, what happens is we're sending to your house a pure signal on the coax, but, your, but that box is plugged into the wall. So when the power is dirty, instead of being 60 cycles, which is the American standard, and, and let's say South America being 50 cycles or Iceland being 50 cycles per second to create them, um, these harmonics, these uh, on and off type flashes come down and the modem thinks it's da data. It doesn't know. It sees all this on off stuff so fast. Right, that's right, how right. data is so you know on off real fast. That's right. what zeros and ones are. And so um, it messes up the modem so it just stops working. And then you call me and say you no longer have internet. And I say have you reset your modem? And you say no. And I tell you unplug it, count ten and plug it back in. And okay it's up. But why do I have to do that? And I say dirty power. Now you can buy a filter for your house, and you can do huh. you can do your whole house, and that will stop. And they say, no, I'll just continue to unplug it and plug it back in. That is interesting. Wow. I, I've often wondered why that actually fixes anything, turning it off and turning it back on. I so, mean, I'm glad it does because it makes it easy. But I've often wondered what it is, and that's what it is, huh? You ever get locked up on your computer? You're trying yeah. to, and it just you can't do anything. You're just locked up. Right. Yeah. You had alternate, control, delete, and even sometimes that doesn't right. work. Right. Right. So you force it closed. Then when you force it closed and turn it back on, it says this program was shut down. You know, too soon. And right. 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 And then it tests it, and then you're back up, and you go, what? What did I? What just happened? Yeah. How does that fix anything? And so that's basically what it is. I, th I think we can do that as humans. We take a nap, and we're all better. All better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In many cases. Time out. And you have another phone call. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. Uh, this is Sonny again, calling back. You met, you know, the dirty power and all that. And it just came to me that when I was working uh, for this utility, in the summertime especially, they would lower the voltage, uh, you know, to avoid... Uh, uh, blackouts. Like control brownouts. Yep. Yeah, well, yeah, that would initiate a brownout to prevent a blackout. Right. And how would that affect uh, these systems now if they're, if they're lowering voltage to stop, uh, for, you know, to prevent a blackout or the fact that uh, 
you live at the end of the line and a lot of people are pulling a lot you know running their air conditioners because it's 110 out and uh what you know what does that do to your signal then i'll hang up and listen thank you yeah well thank goodness that if you look at your computer little box that you plug in your wall wart or if you look at any other thing it, uh, it'll say universal power supply what that means that it'll work at 50 cycles it'll work at 60 cycles huh. it'll work at 90 volts and it'll work at 140 volts and they've done that on purpose because they realize that in certain parts of the country or in certain towns there's not enough power so they've designed the power supply to work at all different voltages and different cycles does the we always hear these things from the emergency alert system about interruption and everything if that were to really happen and then the emergency alert system would take over are they tied into your system so that the only thing a person would see is the guys from the emergency alert system right well it was designed so the president of the united states could talk to all of us in an emergency like a nuclear you know, attack uh-huh. it will blank every single channel um, or they also have ones that don't blank every single channel. What they do is they put a crawl line across every single channel that says there's an emergency. It may, may, may even give you the nature of the emergency, but tells you to turn to channel 13 or turn here. Oh. Uh, but some of the older systems, uh, the set-top converter chan- uh, boxes actually have what's called a barker channel. And what that is, is like channel one. Since there's no real channel one, right. it force tunes that box to channel one. And on channel one, the police chief can come on and say, we had a break in your neighborhood and there's a fugitives loose, stay in your house. Really? It will, it will force tune that oh, TV. Wow. Wow. The, the technology you told us about before where a device that you'll be able to use as a technician will, will pinpoint for you where there's a problem, let's say, in a cable. Yes. Is that, and I'm just taking a shot in the dark here, is that maybe from the NASA program? Because I've often wondered, when, you, when you're in the space station, and that looks like a pretty big thing, if there's a wire that's got to shorten it, how the heck do you find it? I mean, you can't. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. So it's, I mean, is that technology actually something they've been using, and now it's just available uh, here for, for, for you guys? It, it's, like, it's like a spinoff of it, but it wasn't necessarily designed uh, NASA has done so much to advance computer technology. Everything you, you might as well say NASA had a hand in it. Um, but this is just a, a, the modem has been out for like 20 and 30 years. It's only recently that um, okay. So so when internet first started for cable TV, the modems were not organized in the sense that I could have a proprietary software, and so my modem would not work on your system. So. The cable systems got together and, ah. created, and created something called Cable Labs. And so Cable Labs wrote the specifications, and then they wrote the certification, and then they charged any manufacturer who wanted to get their part certified $100,000 per part. So if you had wow. four models, wow. you're, you're paying $400,000. My goodness. But all the big boys then stepped up, Motorola and people like that, and they got their parts certified. So that was like DOCSIS 1, and then they went to DOCSIS means Data Over Cable Systems. You say DOCSIS for D-O-C. Right, right, right. So make a long story short, there was one, and then 1.1, one one, and then DOCSIS 2 was the premier. And then they finally created DOCSIS 3, and what DOCSIS 3 did is let us compete with fiber to the home. Uh, DOCSIS 3 will let me give you 140 megabits per second into your home. Well, now they've invented DOCSIS 3.1, huh. which is supposed to be the epitome of the end all the be all, which will give you like Nothing 500 is. megabits <laughs> per second into your home. Everything becomes obsolete like yeah. in a week or something. But when they were doing all this, they realized that these modems are really, um, you know, computers. And why don't you just interrogate the, the computer and ask it what it's doing? So they started asking it, and the computers, uh, and the more they wrote software to ask it questions, the more information it gave back. And wow. It, wow. So a modem will actually tell me how my head in is doing. It'll say, oh, this is the kind of wow. signals I'm receiving from you, and Scary. channel six is a little <laughs> low. Would you yeah. please turn it up higher? And they, you got to mm-hmm. give me a, So that software, and guess what? That software is free. Because Cable Labs really? invented it, any cable operator can get it free. Now, one of the big questions people ask uh, of, of their cable guy is, um, 
what time are you going to arrive today? And, oh, and, boy. <laughs> yeah, that's the question. Uh, and, now you're getting in dark water. <laughs> and, the an, and the answer is usually a huge margin of time. Yeah, a.m. or p.m. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. is, is that any, any, hope, any hope that that will improve? You know, like, we, we only have 1,000 customers, let's say, to maintain inside Ocala Palms. And so you would think that we could get real close to when we would be at your home. Right. But you go to the first home, and, it, and the person only had a question about, could you relocate my TV from room A to room B? Well, we get there to come to find out it's an attic crawl. So now we got to get the ladders out of oh, the truck. No. We got to, you know. So when we told the next person that we would be there, let's say at ten o'clock, we're, we're, it'd be eleven thirty sometimes before yeah, we get there. Yeah, and they there. get mad because you're not there. Right, and, or the next person just is really wants to ask you some questions, and of course, customer service is what it's about. So you're not going to be rude and right, say, "I'm right, sorry, right, I got to right. go," you know. And so we try to do an AM before. So we set it between nine and noon, or we set it between one and and three, or one and five. And uh, then, uh, then if a customer needs it more narrow than that, like I have a doctor's appointment well, that's at, not too bad, at 2 o'clock, then I'll say, okay, well, then we'll set up between 3 and 5. Okay, yeah, that's not too bad. I, I've had circumstances, and Robin will tell you this. I say, well, I don't, I really can't get out of the studio till like 12, 15 at the earliest. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, well, we'll be there between 10 and 5. <laughs> well, wait a minute. <laughs> That's right. There's a part of that that won't work for me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had to go grocery shopping. <laughs> There's a little bit there that I said 12.15 is when I can come out. Anyway. anyway yeah. So I know that's not technology, but that seems to be one of the most commonly asked questions. It, right? is, it is. And that's why we try to walk a customer through his own fix. You know, like, will you unplug it and plug it back in and things like that. Uh because if we travel there and get to the home and all we do is unplug it and plug it back in, the customer feels that they like they were dumb. Right, you know? right. And, and, and so we try to, but when we unplug it and plug it back in, we show them exactly what we did. And this is what so you we should do, do before you call again. Right. My goodness. Oh, I guess because we took a couple of minutes at the beginning. We are at the bottom already. Is all right. Me? Is that my phone? Your phone? Is that your phone? Right. No. Nope. Do I have a phone? What's up? That doesn't sound like my phone. No, <laughs> it's technology today. We have another right. phone. Yeah. In, Somebody else not forgot right. their phone. <laughs> There's a phone in here somewhere. Yeah. Uh, Jim, how do we get a hold of you? And how how much longer? Speaking of timing, how much longer before I can ask for your service where I live? Well, we're going to launch our alpha test in November. We'll launch our with about 25 customers, and then we're going to launch our beta ch test in December with about 150 customers. And then just about February, we'll launch with about 10,000 set-top boxes. Oh, wow. wow. And then anybody who wants it can have it. And I, th I think the one big draw that you're going to get is from people who want a la carte. Well, that's what that's our f claim to fame. We're going to offer a la carte. That's the one. I mean, that's the one you hear the most about. It's like, uh, that's what I, I want. I love technology, and that's fine, but... I want to be able to say, I don't really want that one, and I do want yeah. this one. Yeah. Exactly. And Robin is, yeah, on top way. of the list. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Jim, always fun to talk to you. I, thank you for uh, reporting on the, the show in Atlanta. Thank you. We'll take a little break, and we'll be right back. Legally Yours, brought to you by Fuller & Fuller Attorneys at Law. On the air every Wednesday morning at 10.30 a.m. with John Fuller, a board-certified civil trial lawyer.